It's over. Harry and Meghan's royal career is threatened by irrefutable evidence of lies. Hello, friends. Welcome to the breaking royal news about the notorious hypocritical couple, Harry and Meghan Markle, on our Kate Middleton and the Queen News version 2 channel. By using royal titles for their invisible kids and also continuing to use their own titles, all the claims that Harry and Meghan have made can now officially be referred to as what they really are, lies. See, by using those titles, they are basically trying to stay part of the institution they claim is so racist, so cold, uncaring, inflexible, controlling, and incredibly unfair. Let's think about what has actually come out of their big mouths versus what they've actually done. My family and I are entirely supportive of Harry and Meghan's desire to create a new life as a young family. Although we would have preferred them to remain full-time working members of the royal family, we respect and understand their wish to live a more independent life as a family while remaining a value part of my family. Now that came from the late queen. But so far, it seems like their independent life relies entirely on being part of the institution they continue to attack. What Megan said is she wanted to show Harry Los Angeles through the eyes of philanthropy. It's just beautiful. But Harry despises LA, and their biggest philanthropic cause is themselves. Harry and Meghan cast the Windsors as a deeply divided group driven by individual agendas with offices leaking stories about other members of the family to ensure their principal royal has the more favorable press coverage. That toxic dynamic, according to Harry, catalyzed their departure. Harry claimed that the two of them were just falling apart because of all this negative media coverage, and that included an intimate letter between Meghan and her estranged father that was published in the Daily Mail. Uh, supposedly, Meghan even started to consider suicide. So Harry tries to say that his family didn't do much to protect them in spite of it all. He said they knew how bad it was. They thought, why couldn't she just deal with it? No one would have private conversations with the editor saying, enough. But what really happened is that when the Queen became ill, Charles started having to take on more of her duties. He and Camilla were preparing to elevate. So this, as a result, meant that William and Catherine also had to step up into the whale's role. They were also preparing to elevate. And even little George was required to have a higher profile because that is the way all of this works. And this made Uncle Ginger Winger really upset. So the wedding was over, the novelty had worn off, and it was time to get back to reality. But that wedding and all the coverage went to their heads. They really thought that people liked them, that their popularity was all about them as people. And Megan was the one leaking like a sieve, come on now. I guess Harry was just too dumb to notice that the calls had been coming from inside their own home. So then after they ran away to the U.S., they decided to just launch grenades at the royal family for Montecito. They tried to set up a fake royal court in a country that not only defeated the U.K. in the Revolutionary War, but also kicked the British out of the country and refused to be a colony or to be a part of the Commonwealth. So let's make this very clear for Harry and that brain-dead piece of trash he chose to marry. No title of nobility shall be granted by the United States, and no person holding any office of profit or trust under them shall, without the consent of the Congress, accept any present, emolument, office, or title of any kind whatsoever from any king, prince, or foreign state. Article 1, Section 9, Clause 8 of the U.S. Constitution. Quote, the Constitution's prohibition on titles of nobility reflects both the American aversion to aristocracy and the Republican character of the government established by the Constitution. The clause thus complements other constitutional provisions, most notably the 13th, 14th, and 15th Amendments, that prohibit invidious governmental distinctions between classes of American citizens. Quote, the Articles of Confederation and many revolutionary era state constitutions contained prohibitions of titles of nobility and other systems of hereditary privilege. Pretty clear, I think. I mean, if they're raising their kids as U.S. citizens, then they are simply not entitled to use those titles. It's not fair for them to try to claim privileges. And guess what, Megan? You are in the same boat. I mean, does she really want to be called Duchess? Then she needs to go to a country that's going to do that. 
because insisting that any person in the U.S. refer to her as Duchess violates their constitutional rights. And we can say the same for that ginger idiot. If he wants to remain a prince, well, maybe he needs to move back to the U.K. And of course, nobody is going to be paying for their security. If they keep on upping the ante on themselves, they're going to find themselves with a big target painted on their backs because they're basically creating a bigger risk around themselves. I wish they could be deported. I mean, they are such security risks, not to mention pieces of garbage. One insider weighed in on this issue, saying, please do deport them. Feel free, but please not permanently back to the UK. She is an American, so you need to keep her with our blessing. As for Harry, anywhere other than Great Britain. I personally am ashamed of his behavior and the fact that he is a prince of the realm. However, a brilliant post. And then another insider said, we don't want them back, but it's very interesting about the article in the U.S. Constitution. That's almost exactly what the novel Little Lord Fauntleroy was about, if I recall correctly. But it's also a pending and yet unratified amendment that would strip U.S. citizenship from anyone who accepts a foreign title. It's been idle for a long time, but you never know. The way these two have been pissing off people could be revived. It clears up quite a few discrepancies about their wants and needs, which I and millions of people who have had a gutful of their guff. Thank goodness you explained the American Constitution. Thank God for that. Australia wouldn't take their crap either. Can these two still not get that they are really hardly anyone at all? You know what they did, right? They want to walk the tightrope of besmirching the British royal family with somewhat general platitudes that they can later say were misconstrued. The British royal family is, and sadly for them, remains their meal ticket, so that couldn't go the way of openly attacking them. Also, notice that they never insult the press, just the British press, even though a lot of what they show as problem behavior of the press was actually from the American press, but whatever. They like to hint at things and be able to eat their words later, like this is some sort of kid's book with aha moments. Now, we didn't word it precisely like that, so we're not guilty, or something like that. And for a little while, it worked. What they forget is that, well, we are not small, gullible kids. The public is comprised of a fair share of adults who don't like being treated as stupid or gullible. So after the first few times, or when egregiously used, racist versus unconsciously biased, for example, this method has run its course and turned against them. One of their biggest strategy failures is thinking that people are stupid and they can outwit everyone. How do you think Harry and Meghan's two-way conspiracy affects the royal family? Let us know your thoughts below in the comments section. We hope you have found this video helpful. Don't forget to leave us a like, share, and subscribe to the channel if you enjoy it. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll be back to see you in the next videos. Bye-bye now.